Hello everyone. Good morning. Well, at least it's morning here in the UK. Um, I'm just waiting for other people to join. Um, I'll just switch the chat window on. Feel free to kind of introduce yourselves in the chat window for now. You won't be seeing anything on your screen at the moment, but you will do when we make a start. Hi, Virginia, Joe, good morning. Hi, Laura. Hi, Jody. And Sasha. How you doing, guys? Hi, Jette. Anna, Angela. Morning from Spain. Okay, you've got quite an international audience. Jody from Australia as well. Wonderful. Just a few more minutes. Let's just see some more people joining in. Hi, Anna from Poland. Hi, Zebek. And Emmanuel from Australia. Hi, Penny. Hi, Virginia. You normally see the chat. The chat button should be um, under participants. But I'm, I've got the host screen, so I don't know what the it looks like. But there should be a chat button. If anybody else can just point Virginia to the right place, then feel free to write on. Hi, Sahaya. Hi, Ria. How are you doing? Enjoying your breakfast, I hope. Um, just audio at the moment. You'll see video screen in a moment, Zebek. Um, I'll launch it in a minute. I'm just waiting to see if we're giving enough time for people to join. Still the, I can just see the numbers increasing of the people that are joining in. And once that kind of slows down and stops, I'm going to make a start. I'll give it about probably another minute or so, and then I'll, then I'll make, a, make a start. Okay. Hello from Russia, Okinawa, Virginia, Australia. Wonderful. Okay. Hi, Z, from the UK. Hi, Kofer from Malaysia. Gilles from Switzerland. Nice to meet you. Hi, Rafaela from Italy. Dipali from India. And Huda from oh, German Academy. Okay, so we've met from the UAE. Hi, Cedric from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Samantha from Australia. Hi, Kali. Okay, I think we should be making a start now because um, and if there's people that want to join, then that's that's fine. Okay, so um, I'm now going to kind of share my um, screen with you. Um, so if I just share this from my iPad, uh, microphone is on, I'm going to start the broadcast and Right about now, you should be seeing uh, my screen. Okay, so um, welcome to this session. Um, this is a teacher-based session on Shobi and Socrative. And we're gonna look at 
some key features of Shobi, certainly from a distance learning perspective, but I'll also make reference to how this can be useful for um, everyday and day-to-day -day classroom. And I, I know that there are some people in the group that are kind of expert users of Shobi, but maybe there's something that, um, that they'll pick up from this as well. And I'm sure that there will be people who have never used Shobi before. Um, just as by way of introduction, um, I don't work for Shobi, but I've partnered with Shobi because I've implemented it in a number of schools around the world, working with leadership teams and looking at policies and procedures and looking at how it can be embedded across the organization and so on. So my uh, name is Abdul. Um, I, my organization is called Think Simple. Um, those are my details on the bottom left hand side. So feel free to kind of make a note of that or get in touch with me afterwards as well if there is anything else that you wish to kind of um, discuss or want to know more about. Um, okay, so people um, that are on the webinar will have, can access Shobi in two ways. Okay, and this is gonna be a hands-on interactive session. So um, you'll get an idea of how to set up distance learning as well. Um, there are countries like Greenland where Shobi is used across the country um, because um, distance learning is something of a norm um, when weather conditions and um, things can be kind of quite adverse. Um, it, they make sure that the, the schooling and, and education can continue. Um, and at this moment in time with the, with the, with the coronavirus, COVID-19 that's happening around the world, there are lots of people looking at this from a distance learning perspective as well. Um, okay, so um, it's going to be hands-on. You, you can access Shobi in two ways. One is through an app on an iPad, and that's the preferred method because there are lots of extra options that you will get um, with Shobi on an iPad because you've got a camera on the back and you can do a whole bunch of extra stuff. However, you can access Shobi um, through a browser. Okay, so for a browser, you would need to go to, um, if I just pull up my browser and I just go to here, you need to go to Shobi.com. Okay, um, and we're going we're gonna to sign up. Now, some of you may already have a Shobi account, um, so you would need to sign out and sign back in as a student. So the way that we're going to do this is you guys are going to be the students, um, I will be the teacher, and you are going to join my class. So if you have the Shobi app, if you can sign in as a student, if you don't have the Shobi app um, on an iPad and you're going to do it through a browser, then feel free to go to Shobi.com. And in both, on both occasions, you're going to tap sign up for free. Okay. Um, and when you do sign up for free, you will then be presented with this screen. Now, I'm just going to switch out of this because um, I have a slide that kind of explains uh, very easily how to kind of sign up and here we are so you're going to tap on I'm a student you're then going to tap on sign up with username and then you're going to present be presented with this third screen on which you're going to enter your first name your last name and then username and password you can ignore the email because it's just optional so first name last name is straightforward username um, there are about there are over 2 million registered users of Shobi. So um, your username may be taken. So feel free to kind of put numbers in between your usernames at the beginning, at the end, and so on. Okay. And then finally, you'll end up in a position where it's asking you to join a class. Okay. Where it's asking you to join a class. So um, if you can just get to that point, and then I will show you how. Um, we create a class code as a teacher um, and then we begin our interaction. So I'm going to leave this up for a about 30, 30 seconds or more for people to kind of work through. I kind of appreciate that for some people, the username, you might have a few attempts at your username. Okay. Um, in which case, what I will do is once I've generated the class code, I will put it in the chat window in Zoom. Okay, so any people that come in late or uh, anybody that is kind of taking a while for the username to kind of come through, then you can, you've still got the class code that you can use from the chat window. Okay. So just give you a few more, a few more 
uh, seconds just to kind of get to that point. I appreciate some of you might be at the join the class mode. But this is what's really useful about Shobi and what we're doing at this moment in time is as long as you've got a, a method or an approach of getting the class code to your students, and it might be an email to all the parents, uh, it might be using apps like Class Dojo, um, whatever approach you've got getting the code to the students, then really um, that's all that you need to do. And, you know, it doesn't require big server setup. It doesn't require, you know, um, kind of logins and usernames to be generated by technicians. It's a pretty simple way of creating like a virtual class and having deep interaction with students, okay? Right, so let's kind of get to the point where we're going to show B and generate a class code. Um, so I'm gonna, this is the show B app for those of you that might not have seen it, okay? And we're gonna tap on show B and what you'll notice is quite a simple layout. My classes are all on the left and most of these are just literally schools that I've been working with. But as a teacher, you would have kind of, you know, different classes and different class names there. Um, and this wrench icon or spanner icon at the top, if I tap on this, simple and straightforward, it just says new class. So I tap on new class. And here, it's automatically generated a, a code. Okay, now this code, if you put it in right now, it's going to say it's an invalid code because I haven't hit the save button and I haven't started, um, I haven't actually set it up. So, a um, couple of things there's a portfolio button which I've switched on, and this portfolio um, icon literally allows me um, to kind of um, put students' work and allow students to kind of put their best quality work into a portfolio folder, um, which can then be seen by people. And also there's parent access as well. So if I switch that on, um, I can very easily kind of um, allow parents to communicate. In a distance learning environment, it's debatable whether you would really need a parent access. Most children at home, parents can see what they're doing. Um, and then even from when your school is kind of operational again, you may want to consider whether you want to give parents total access to everything that their students are doing on Shobi, or um, you want to allow that for just certain parents, okay? So then we're gonna do a new class, and I'm just gonna call this Abdul's class, because um, I, on the left-hand side, the class names are put in alphabetical order, and I want my class to be at the top. Um, I can actually um, use emojis, yeah? So, I might, if it's a math class, I might choose something like this, that it's, a, it's that represents numbers. So therefore the younger students can kind of understand, you know, what this is about and they can see images. So I've seen that happen with very young uh, children that are using Shobi as well. So if I hit save now, this is being saved and I'm gonna add an assignment, okay? And the class code is there again, MFQR8, okay? And I'm just gonna go back to Zoom and I'm just gonna put this in the chat window, okay? Wonderful, thank you, Ria, your star, for putting that in there for me, wonderful. Okay, so I now need to kind of I'll just go back and continue. Okay, so let's look at a new assignment. And this new assignment, we're just gonna do some simple introductory stuff um, to do with Shobi and introduce some of the features. So I'm gonna call this introductions. <coughs> excuse me. Now, I've got a few options on this screen. I've got a due date. I can make this assignment view only. The pen icon means that it's editable and the students can interact with it. Or I might still be, I want to keep this locked. I don't want the students to see this. And I'm going to set a schedule for when it actually becomes editable. Okay. Um, which then means that you know, I can get all my assignments together, I can get all my resources together, and I might send that out. Alternatively, you might get students to edit the documents and so on, and then you lock it, and then students can't see it, you give them feedback um, for all the students, and then when you <coughs> make it editable again, then, um, you know, it will basically send notifications and it will allow students to see the feedback all at the same time. So I'm just going to make this editable again. I'm going to hit save. And what we will see is under introductions, 
there's a whole bunch of students or you guys have joined my class, right? So that's kind of very simple and straightforward, yeah? So we've done a number of these sessions um, and I think it's worthwhile looking at. One thing I will mention is at the moment, um, Shobi is, I believe, giving out um, five free pro licenses. So the, the, the version of Shobi that you're seeing with me is the pro version. There's the free version as well. The free version has some limitations, which we'll talk about uh, afterwards. And, this, and same with Socrative as well. So the Socrative is pro and the Socrative that is just a free version and there are limitations between the two. But I'll talk you through that uh, in a moment. Um, okay, so the, the part to know, the, the, the kind of key thing to, to understand here is I can see all the students, but you guys cannot see each other. Okay, so you can see the teacher view on my screen, but on your screen, you cannot see each other. And there's this shared items area at the top. So if as soon as I tap on shared items, I end up with this workspace on this side of the screen, okay? And whatever I put in shared items, um, everybody in the class can see it. If I was to tap on a student and I was to write something in the comment box at the top, only Laura would see this, okay? So I can interact individually or I can interact with the whole class. So let's just go to shared items um, and I've got two areas here. One is just write a comment and one is this plus icon. And we're gonna explore this area in a moment. So it's pretty simple. Um, if I just say hello and welcome and I hit post, okay, you will see that you have all kind of received that, okay? And it's pretty simple and straightforward. But for me, um, Shobi provides some things that are actually quite, quite powerful. Okay, and I'm gonna just kind of go to this plus icon here. Um, and if I tap on it, I, you can see that I've got a number of kind of options and interactions that I can do. I've got the camera button, which is very simple. You tap on it, the camera fires up. I can take photos of things and post it here and everybody can see it. Very, very easy. Scan document, we're gonna look at in a moment. Photo library. Um, okay, so it's photos, but also videos as well. If you've got videos in your library on your iPad, uh, on your computer, you can actually upload videos as well, not just photos. And then the interesting one is this voice note here. Okay, so if I just tap on voice note, I get this kind of audio feature here, and I'm just going to record my voice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this class, and I would like you to type and tell me which country you are from. And I hit post, this gets uploaded, and you will all list, be able to kind of listen to this. And then I want you to write something and send um, a response back to me. Now, from a distance learning perspective, voice is really powerful, okay? It's the one thing that students miss out on typically, you know, because the teacher's not there. But if we have technology now that allows us to kind of use voice and connect with our students and they can do the same, then actually um, that's a very, very powerful feature. If I hold the voice note button down, I can also rename it. Okay. So if I just kind of say activity one, okay, then it's kind of there. It's very, very easy um, and students can see it. And what you notice, what you can see on the left hand side, I'm getting these paper clips and I'm getting these blue lines appearing. The paper clip tells me that you've submitted something. The blue line tells me that I haven't actually seen it yet. Okay. So if I go to Alex at the top, he's got, I've got a paper clip and I've got the blue line that's there. Once I tap on it. Okay. So Alex has said hello to me. And if I just go back to shared items, the blue line has disappeared. Now, if Alex was to submit something again or write something again, that blue line would appear and it would tell me that Alex has submitted something and I haven't seen it, okay? So I can see people kind of submitting things here, wonderful, and they're kind of responding and sending me something, okay? And I can kind of see very, very simple, very, very easy kind of activity that you can put together. Okay, so we're now going to do something a little bit kind of different. And I think this is, this is quite important. Um, so where Shobi is used in schools regularly, 
Um, one of the things that, that does happen, that's kind of worthwhile knowing about, um, is that students can submit their work through Shobi. And the work that they submit can be videos, can be PowerPoints, can be um, animations, whatever they've produced on their computer that's digital, they can submit that through here. Okay, and that's really easy to do. They go to a plus, and if there's the file option here, okay, and if we go to file, and I go back to browse here, I can connect my Office 365 OneDrive or Teams account here, or my Google Drive, depending if your school's using Google Drive, or if your resources are on Dropbox, something like that, you can connect things from here and you can pick things up from the file and go into your folders and be able to kind of pick things up and send send things uh, to the students this way very very easy to do and the students can do the same as well okay so that's something to be aware of but there are many schools that are even getting students to send their analog things as well so uh, if students have written something in their books Okay, and they've been completing activities in their books. Um, then that again is something that um, can be um, sent to the teacher as well. And we're going to have a look at that right now, right? So I've got uh, an exercise. I've got a journal, exercise book, whatever you might call them. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap on the plus icon, and I'm going to switch on scan document. Scan document is different from camera okay because it actually scans for documents if i tap on scan document okay so what you'll see here is it's kind of looking for a document which it's found and it's taken i've just taken a picture of that i can adjust the corners from here if i want to okay so get rid of the table and so on that's good enough if i do keep scan it puts that there at the bottom but it hasn't stopped and really i'm going to kind of turn it over because i want the second page as well Okay, and we're going to just hit the button there, and that's good enough, and I can do keep scan. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the save button on the bottom right. And what it does is it gives me this option that says, do I want to add them as individual items, or do I want to add this as a document? So if I just go to adding this as a document, you'll see that it's automatically converting this into a PDF and it will upload this and because i've put this in the shared items you can all see this right and what you'll also notice that on my screen um there's this kind of large preview and because i've done two pages i can actually swipe across in there and have a look at this as well okay now i can enable large previews with these three dots that are at the top here so if i press on that and show large previews. If I switch that off, it, it just looks like an icon. If I switch it on, I can see this and it looks like this, which is kind of very, very useful. Okay. Um, okay, so now what can we do with this? So let's just kind of go in there. And what we can do here is um, we can now annotate and we can kind of do things that we would expect um, to do on a, a digital kind of platform so for example um, i can hold the pen icon for example and i can get and choose different colors and i can do the typical things that i would expect you know i can kind of circle something um, underline whatever it is i want to be able to do mark up and so on then i have the option to kind of use a text box as well so this um this circle here with the lines in it and the, the speech bubble that's a text box so if i do this and type that here. I can do um, just do something that is not very meaningful feedback, but you know you get the idea. Hit save, and that's there. And I and if I tap on my initial that's there, it minimizes it. So if I put multiple kind of feedback or multiple kind of comments, although it's kind of obscuring the text here, if I tap on that, it will hide that, and I can move that about to wherever I want. Um, however what i've shown you so far is typically something that you could probably do on a physical exercise book anyway um but if i just go up and show you this icon which is like the speech bubble with the play button this is where i think shobi really kind of shines and comes onto its own so if i tap on that and then i tap somewhere else and i hit the record button 
hey, can you tell me a little bit more about Juliet's relationship with her parents? Um, please use the voice record option and you can just explain it to me verbally. Thank you. Right. And the thing with Shobi is, is that it's important to tell students how you want them to respond as well, because they've got a variety of different options. Right. They can actually they can record their voice. Um, they could just put a text box in there. They could scribble on top of this as well. Um, what's really useful and where I've kind of worked with schools um, in some detail, um, we, we've kind of come up with a feedback policy that's different to what a typical feedback policy looks like. If I just keep this document, this press, and hit the rename button, um, I can kind of rename this. And again, some schools are using kind of the images and let's just say this is like the next steps icon if I want, um, then, you know, um, that just tells the student that this voice note is about what you need to do next. Okay. Um, and I, again, I can move that wherever I want and they can tap on it and they can immediately see what this is about. Okay. So once I've done this, there isn't a save button, but there is this done button here. And if I hit done, this will now um, be saved and you will all have this. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to open this up and I want to show you something um, that kind of takes it to a different level, um, another feature that's really useful. Um, and I want you to kind of open it up and I want you to edit it. You could just scribble, draw something. It doesn't have to be anything meaningful. If you want to record your voice or put a text box on, then feel free to do that. Um, but just have a go and edit that and then just hit the done button on the top left. Let me give you a couple of minutes to do that. Okay, and I can see some more blue lines appearing on the left, which tells me that actually, yes, you know, people are editing and sending this back to me. Um, and it's, this is a, a great feature in, in class as well, because before the lesson finishes, you should be able to see a full blue line from students sending things back to you. It works really well if you have a one-to-one -one technology program. Um, but even if you don't have that, uh, many schools are kind of, you know, they, they have shared iPads. So in the current situation, they've given the iPads to the teachers and the students will just get, uh, will access this at home. The limitations that you will get on a browser are that when you tap the plus icon, you don't see all the features that are there. You can upload files, you can do a few other things, but you can't do scan documents and so on. The other issue with browsers is, is that when you, um, when it does, not all browsers give you the option to record your voice and audio, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, but it's still um, a good way of getting documentation and things across to students for them to annotate um, and send it back to you. Um, very, very easy to do. Okay, so um, what I'm now gonna do is very easily, I'm just gonna tap on this uh, document again. Um, but this time, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So this was a document that I sent out to everyone with my edits on it. And then I've got these three, the icon with the three kind of people here. Um, and if I just tap on that, uh, you can see I've got kind of people on my class list that pops up. So if I just tap on the first student, what you'll see is, you know, I can see now Alex's annotations on uh, the book here and now I can give feedback. I can mark very very quickly and so on I've got this arrow button here. That's now appeared if I tap on the arrow it takes me to the next student and The next one. Okay, and there's no edits. I've been done by by just uh, Gother no edits. I've been done by Gother um, Laura, yeah, Laura's put some edits on here and I can kind of see it. So this could be a test paper, it could be an exam paper, it could be something that literally I've sent out as a PDF, you know, um, or a scanned document of a worksheet. And as the students have completed it, I'm just giving feedback very, very quickly on here. Very, very easy to do. Um, and actually, um, you know, students can kind of interact with this. And this saves a significant amount of time for teachers. Okay, um, 
so scan document feature is it a pro feature um sorry i've got dave asking me the question here um the scan document uh, feature it should be on the free one as well however um two things one just make sure that your ipad is updated um and it's got the latest ios on there and then you've updated showbiz as well um and if you still don't have it then it probably is uh, a pro uh, a pro feature okay and um, the pro feature on showbiz it kind of gives you unlimited access to everything um the free version the voice note recordings can only be a minute long that you can only have 10 assignments that kind of that you can add into a class um you can't integrate showbiz with socrative which we will look at in a minute so there are some limitations so it's worthwhile applying for the free um licenses uh, at the moment to kind of get a good feel of what showbiz is really about and socrative as well okay so this just is just like a process for quick marking it kind of just lets me kind of do these things very very quickly um, and i can just mark and give feedback as i go along very very easy to do so if i just hit the done button um i'm back here again so that's a really great feature that i've got here um i've also got this the star button here that's like the the portfolio option okay so mike's added to portfolio 8 minutes ago okay so that's in and if i just go to uh, mike's portfolio um here i will see all the work um that mike has got and if he's in any other classes they would appear uh, on this side here as well and i would be able to see all mike's portfolio work very very easy to use very very simple okay so if i just go back to classes and uh, introductions here um, okay so we're going to kind of look at uh, another thing now um and i'm just going to enable this so i'm just going to go back by tapping on this arrow here um and if i just go back and one area that you will notice that i've got here is class discussion this can be really useful um and certainly from a distance learning perspective it's huge right so i can now allow students to post if i just tap on allow students to post right all of you can contribute here right so feel free you know you can write comments in fact you 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 can use this to ask questions as well um and i'm happy to kind of answer them uh, here so feel free to kind of post things uh, here um to post and i hit the post button and you'll can kind of see that that will kind of come up there and um can we export the portfolio um good question um you're talking about the documentation that's there um i don't think you can export it as in you know um does it all come out as a word document file or something like that but you can print out if you wanted to actually print it out or kind of send all those documents to a different place then you can do that you can export everything that but you probably have to do that individually because each item will potentially be different i don't think it allows you to export all of the documents into a file as far as i know um <coughs> Let's have a look. The show we have an upload feature where you don't all have to be in the class at the same time. Absolutely. So um, you can, so you can kind of create. I don't, I'm trying to understand, Mike, what you mean by that. But yeah, I can kind of just kind of press the the files button, and I can just upload the content up there, and it's kind of quite quite easy to do. Um, but if you're if you're meaning that do i can i start a class without the students and then kind of put everything in there um that i you can't do because you have to have student as part of being the class you might lock it so that students can't see anything um but then you might be able to kind of you know um you can certainly lock it and then you can kind of um so that students can't see it and then you upload all your content it's kind of quite quite easy to do um okay so um one thing i will say to you is if i just come out of here and go to browse i'll i'll put this here so you guys can kind of take this um this is the place where um you can kind of sign up um where are we 
for your free licenses. It's worthwhile kind of getting and testing out, yeah? Um, hit post. So you can tap on that link, save it, and literally you can kind of apply for your free five pro licenses and then you know just test it out and see what you think if you ha if you're in a place at the moment where schools are not open and you're relying on distance learning then it's certainly worthwhile um looking at so can you easily grade the submissions yes you can um I'll show you that in a moment. Um, can students upload uh, their own work outside of class time? Yes, they can. It's entirely up to them. They can do it. Um, you know, they can continue to work on this. In fact, what I kind of see quite often is a number of students will continue on projects and work after school hours as well because they've got access to everything that they need. Um, so if I kind of just come out of here, I'll pop into there again. Um, and let me just go to Alex here. And let me just tap on this. Um, so one thing that you can do is on the top right where this tick button is, if I press that, here I can add grades, okay? And then I'm able to export the grades as CSV into any learning management system, and then learning management systems can do their number crunching. So it should be pretty global, so therefore it's got this feature where you can export the CSV data. Um, and once you can kind of do that, um, you can then kind of um you can then um basically share that out with um, your um you know your management uh, your learning management system quite quite easy to do okay so um one thing that i will kind of go to now and i think this is kind of useful to know is um is Socrative, yeah? So Socrative is an assessment for learning, summative, formative assessment kind of tool. Um, it can measure very quickly, you know, how well students have done in a particular class. Um, and for a long time, Socrative was its own app, um, but not so long ago, Shobi bought out Socrative, um, and it's now kind of part of the Shobi suite of apps, yeah? Um, so let me just kind of come out of here, and let me show you this Socrative app, which is there, okay? So the students don't have to do anything. They don't need to sign up to Socrative or anything like that. You'll see this in a moment because it happens directly in the class. If I just go to Socrative, um, so I signed up to Socrative and this is like the pro version. Um, if you're using the free version of Shobi, you can't see Socrative, yeah? Um, and you won't be able to do this. But if you get the five pro licenses, for free, then you'll get separative bundled with it. Also, one of the things that Shobi is doing is where there are schools that are fully using Shobi for all their teachers, they're bundling separative with it. Okay, um, so where schools are going fully Shobi um, and all the teachers and they've got a license for all their teachers, students don't need a license, it's just the teachers, then literally, um, you know, you get, you get Socrative bundled with it. So the first time you go to Socrative, you kind of sign in, um, use any, have your own username and password. You can set quizzes, multiple choice, true, false, short answers, and so on. Um, you can have different rooms, yeah? So I just created this periodic table room because I'm a chemistry teacher uh, at heart. Um, but literally, um, you can, you might have, you know, um, this for different grades, uh, different classes, different topics, you might create different rooms. And within each room, you then have your quizzes. Um, and in this case, I've got a periodic table quiz that I made uh, earlier on. I can share it. I can share that quiz with other teachers as well, right, which is useful. Um, but if I go into the periodic table quiz, and I can hear, I can edit the quiz. And it's really self-explanatory, right? I can add questions extra questions i've only done uh, four so this one you know it's just a if i edit this you know this is where i just kind of type in my text i select which answer is correct so it will auto mark um i can add photos as well so question two i've put the photo of the taj mahal um and i'm just kind of putting in you know what compound it is and i, I put an answer in um there i've got a true or false question um, very very easy and then I've got an open-ended question where the students can actually type text as well. So if I do save and exit, and I come out of here, what we're now gonna do is go into Shobi, okay? And I'm gonna tap on this plus icon again. And when I do this at the bottom, this particular line that you see here that says quiz, this is actually 
where it connects to Socrative. So if I tap on quiz, okay, um, I have to choose a room. But before I do that, let me show you what I have to do one time to kind of connect my Shobi with my Socrative. So if I go right to the beginning and this icon where my initial is at the top, if I tap on there, I've got this option here to connect to Socrative. So I would do this just one time. Um, at the moment, I'm already connected, but it would be asking me my username and password for Socrative. I would just add that here, and then it just links my Shobi to Socrative. Very, very easy to do, okay? Let's just go back to class um, and into introductions, and I'm just gonna tap on uh, the plus icon, and let's tap on quiz. Now, when I do this, it's asking me to choose a room. And my room was the periodic table room, which would come up here. And I'm going to connect that room. And then you'll see the quizzes that were in there. Okay. So I've got my periodic table quiz, which is great. And then I hit next. And here I've got an option. Okay. I've got a number of options. I've got this instant feedback option. If I choose this, then students can answer the questions in order. They cannot change the answers. And it's instant feedback. Okay, um, very, very easy to understand. Open navigation, um, students can answer the question in any order, they can change the answers before finishing, but we can still monitor the progress as, as teachers. Um, and then teacher pace is when the teacher controls um, the flow of questions and monitors the responses as they happen, and you can skip and revisit as well. It has got some options here on the right, so that you can kind of shuffle the questions. Okay, so they, not every, but all students get the same question at the same time. Um, it does all of these things and I can kind of switch them off. But if I just go to instant feedback and I hit start, what you will notice on your screens and in your workspace, um, you will get an, an activity that will kind of pop up. Okay, um, let's just have a look at this. Let's do that again. So quiz, periodic table, hit next, instant feedback, hit start. Okay, there we are. And you can see that you've got um, an option to kind of go into this uh, activity now and go into the quiz. So I can check how well you've understood your learning from this particular lesson. What I can do as a teacher is if I tap on this, you'll see that it kind of, I can see which students are actually interacting with the quiz, okay? And you guys can kind of just have a go at doing the questions and just feel free to put in whatever answers you want. It doesn't really have to be right or wrong. Um, just give you enough time to kind of do this. Um, what you'll notice as well is if I want to see what question two is, if I tap on question two, it pops up here and I can kind of see it very easily. Okay, so if I just pull this up. So this is brilliant for within class as well. I can kind of see exactly what people are doing, you know, and you know, what activities that they're actually having a, having a go at. I can see which students have got how much. If I know that one question's being answered incorrectly all the way through, then it probably means as a teacher, I need to kind of have a look at this again. Um, the other thing that I will say as well is that like some good uses of this is when um, in some schools where they're using Socrative, they give the quiz at the beginning just to measure how much students already know and what they don't know. Then what happens is they give the quiz again at the end of the lesson. And because it's self-marking, um, it doesn't take much time from teachers. And literally what it can do is it can um, reduce the workload significantly, but it will tell teachers, okay, that, you know, this is um, allowing us to kind of, it will tell teachers how much students have learned in that particular lesson. Okay, so we've kind of um, got people to kind of answer a lot of these questions. I'm just gonna finish this and watch what happens, yeah? So I've finished the quiz. Now, what happens is kind of quite interesting. Um, this section here where it says periodic table, and then where it says ended and the three dots, if I tap on those three dots, um, I've got the option to distribute reports, okay? Now, 
what's really good about that is it will make a personalized report for all of you that took part in the test but anyone that didn't take part it won't give it won't send you a report so if i just do distributing reports um, it's now generating a report for every person that had a go at the test and it's going to send it to you um, and that way you can kind of do corrections and we can interact with it even even further so once once it's finished doing the distribution of reports you'll kind of see these little red circles popping up um, as a teacher you'll be able to see that on my class um, there you are so dave has got one yvette um, and slowly but surely these will all get kind of populated um, and you can go in and you can see it's like a pdf document um, and it can be annotated as well right so once that's done so if i kind of just go through and i look at i don't know let's look at and okay i can see that here is the pdf i can now open that up okay and what's nice about this is i'm interacting with the student the student is not seeing everybody else's they can only just see theirs um, and I can just give feedback here, what went well, what you might need to do to kind of get these things right. Um, if it's multi-choice and they've got things right, I can just put a voice note and be able to say, can you explain how you figured this one out and so on. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that I can do um, with this. Yeah, very, very easy. Um, and in the Socrative app, it saves the data as well in terms of the scores that students have got. And the, all of that is kind of exportable as well. So this is kind of, again, a very, very useful tool. Um, a couple of other things that you might be worthwhile kind of uh, knowing about um, is if I just go into this class. Um, in my class members, so if you see there, I've got class members. I've got a bunch of things here that are actually quite useful. Yeah? So I can see all my students that are here. Um, one of the issues that sometimes happens certainly with technology and even with after schools have spent a lot of money on technology um you know there's kind of things where students forget their passwords and things like that so this is where it should be is kind of taking care of things like that and from a distance learning perspective it's quite easy to do so if i go into copers account um i can change passwords student forgets their password i can just give them a new username and a new password um, and very easily set them up um, with a new password in case they forget that. Okay. Um, and again, with parents, if I go into here, so for Coders Parents, there's a code that it kind of creates. Um, and if I send that code to the parent, they would just get the Shobi app, put this code in um, when it says join a class. Um, and then um, literally they would be able to see all their students kind of interactions and work and feedback from the teacher they'll be able to listen to voice notes from the teacher and so on which is actually quite powerful it does shobi does prepare kind of invitations so if i just do make a printable handout um and if i say view the handout kind of comes up like this right which is kind of quite nice very very easy to kind of do um uh, it's got the code in there um and you know it's got it's personalized and it's got some instructions in there for them to kind of uh, join up as well so very easy quite straightforward in terms of how you can kind of interact and and and, and set this up oh one one other thing if i go into class members you saw students there but actually i can add teachers as well so what you can see here some people in our group have kind of signed up as teachers and I can then approve them. So where this is powerful from a distance learning perspective is that actually um, it, you can have multiple teachers in a class. So therefore, um, you can kind of get them to, to work and give feedback at the same time. If there's teachers that can't make it, then another teacher can take over. And somebody asked the question about transition, uh, year six, year seven, if I remember in the class discussions it was. Um, so literally, um, 
you can, this is really good for when children are moving from one phase of school to another. You can actually add teachers in there so they can see the children that are coming up, what, you know, how are they perform. They can really familiarize themselves with um, what this actually looks like for the students coming up. Um, we've kind of seen this being used in schools across the board from you know, primary, uh, elementary school, all the way to high school as well. Um, and it's like this consistent approach that you can kind of use across the organization um, and they can kind of see uh, what's happening. So it's definitely worthwhile um, looking at. Um, if I just come out of this, um, I'm going to kind of just um, point you to a, show you a couple of things that are worthwhile considering. So um, Shobi does is not intended to kind of replace G Suite or Office 365, but what is useful is if you can have all your resources, your videos, PowerPoints, keynotes, uh, and so on, on a cloud-based system like Office 365 or, Show, or, or, or uh, G Drive uh, or G Suite, yeah. Um, Shobi and Socrative really sit for um, verbal feedback, for marking, for assessment. Uh, it's almost like an extension of the student's exercise book, okay. Feedback and marking and that kind of effective coaching and so on with students is a big part of education and has huge impact on student outcomes. So therefore, using a tool um, like Shobi for that purpose is actually quite a, a powerful thing to do. But what's important is in an organization, you have an agreed approach that works um, and you've kind of built consistency across the organization. So if I show you one particular um, example, so if I go into Shobi um, and I'm just going to go into this one and here and this class and if I just pull up this particular school. So in this school um, at the end of each lesson, regardless of whether the item is going to get marked or not, what you will see is the students will take a picture of their work that they've done, the scan document, and it's uploaded here. So it can be seen all the time. There's rubrics that are here that are then annotated and edited. Um, but it, what you're not seeing here is PowerPoints and keynotes and videos. It's literally the students' work and the feedback and assessment piece that goes on in there and the teacher giving feedback and audio feedback and everything that's there for them to be able to kind of see. Okay, and the students are responding back verbally as well. Verbal feedback tends to get students kind of interacting a lot more. Okay, they tend to respond to hearing the teacher's voices, seeing it as a command. You don't, I mean, there's a number of impact studies that we've done um, in different schools, um, but what we're not seeing necessarily is, um, you know, students, teachers give verbal feedback and the students don't respond. Many teachers that have kind of taken this on board, what they typically say is that when, um, when we give written feedback in books, most of the time the students don't really respond to it. But since we've been giving verbal feedback and they can hear us, um, you know, we're getting uh, some response uh, back from people. Um, so it's kind of worthwhile um, looking at. Um, what I will say to you is that um, there's a, there is um, some kind of next steps that are kind of worthwhile um, looking at. Um, and if I, I'm not going to go through all these slides, but um, so kind of coming up to time as well. Um, definitely worthwhile going to, to, to showbe.com um, and to kind of sign up with them. Um, there is a leadership perspective webinar as well. So I think that's going to happen later on this afternoon. So if you want to kind of join and, and see what it's like from a leadership perspective. So we're going to kind of look at, you know, how do I run an impact study? You know, um, how do I, what measurements can I take around that shows that this is actually going to make a difference in my class and so on. And then you're more than welcome to kind of join that. It's less hands-on and it's more kind of, you know, uh, where are the cost savings and money savings and time savings and how can we be a lot more efficient if we're using a tool like Shobi and how does technology allow us to kind of get those efficiencies. Um, we also do on-site training and implementation. So typically that's the simple in my organization. So we work with schools um, to kind of get this implemented. Um, I know there's somebody from Ajman here as well, Ajman Academy. Uh, that's kind of one of the schools that I've been working with quite, quite closely, um, kind of developing uh, policies and 
procedures and making sure that it's working for the younger students as well as the older students and in the different departments and so on. There's another uh, college called Al Sirat College in Melbourne, Australia. Um, again, similar kind of thing, but we've kind of they've gone all the way through Shobi and we're kind of implementing, helping them to implement this across the organization and so on. Um, I've already sent you this link that you're seeing at the bottom. So that, that's this link that allows you to kind of, um, you know, sign up for um, the free pro licenses, which is definitely worthwhile uh, doing um, and having a, having a go with. Okay, so um, again, if I just finish off just by saying that, look, this is my credentials and, and details. Um, feel free to kind of um, reach out to me if you want. My Twitter account is there. The, on my Twitter feed, um, on the, the pin tweet right at the top, um, there is a, an article that I published for the Chartered College that talked about the verbal feedback and the benefits of verbal feedback and you know how it helped reduce workload for teachers and so on. Um, so it might be worthwhile a read if you are interested in looking at that but certainly in the current climate um, and the distance learning perspective the verbal element and the, and the ability to kind of speak to students is quite a powerful powerful tool um, I definitely encourage you to kind of uh, consider and use that um, as part of your kind of um, approach uh, to learning so let me just kind of go back to our discussions um, if there are um, any kind of questions um, then kind of feel feel free to kind of get in touch with me okay okay let's have a look okay Laura I can see you getting like 300 emails in one hour um, that's probably to do with notifications and you should be able to switch off notifications if you if you don't kind of want notifications for a particular class, right? Um, so it's worthwhile kind of looking at that. So here um, you've got notification preferences, right? And here you can kind of switch off what you want and what you don't want, right? So um, once you do that, then you're not inundated with, um, you're not inundated with uh, emails. Um, there are, yeah, you're, uh, you're right. There's lots of additional tutorials on YouTube um, and you can kind of go on there and find a whole bunch of different things um, if you want to have a, have a look at that as well. Okay, um, I think that kind of brings us um, to the end of this. I'll go to Zoom. I'll stop the broadcast now. Um, I'll, I'll see if there are questions in Zoom. Um, One teacher purchases a license. How many students can it support? Um, it can support as many students as you want. It's unlimited, okay? Um, definitely. You can connect it with Microsoft Teams. Um, just tap on the plus icon, hit file, and you can access all the stuff that's on Teams, yeah? So definitely, that's something that you, you can do, okay? How do we distribute the webinar? Um, so the webinar has been recorded on the cloud. It will kind of create um, its own link. And at some point we can kind of send this out to you. So because you've registered with Shobi, they have your emails. So they'll be able to send the link to you, no problem. Okay, let me see if I miss anything else. Has I already paid software devices? Can I get a discount Shobi Pro? Um, I, think, I think you might be able to kind of do that. It's, it's Z, I'm just kind of saying that you, um, reach out to the Shobi team, get into email them. They're pretty quick and responsive with that. I mean, it's worthwhile asking, um, asking the, the question um, and kind of, you know, getting that. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay, some of the, all the discussion comments are coming through my email, probably because of the notifications. So you would switch that off and then you should be, um, you should be okay. Yeah, uh, Lisa's kind of giving you that. Um, math formulas, um, it kind of depends um, on the, if you're using the browser or if you're using the iPad, it kind of depends um, what math formulas that you're using. But um, what I would say uh, is, 
typically the math teachers that I work with, they kind of just do a screen recording on their iPad. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. You just write with your pen and you just explain things and you just send the, the, video, the video clip out. Okay, so that kind of gets around the whole, what icons am I using and so on. Same with chemistry teachers when they're doing symbols and so on. Um, you can kind of just write on the screen and you can kind of get on. So, okay. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, guys. Um, and see you soon and stay safe.